Hey monkeys, it's Jim from Small Time Outlaws and I am bringing you the 15th video in this tutorial series on advanced programming in Monkey. In this video we'll be covering much of the shorthand notation in Monkey and other ways you can keep typing to a minimum in case you're really trying to knock out some code real fast. And then we'll also be looking at the strict keyword which actually disallows all these shortcuts in shorthand notation and forces you to write more vorbo- Ugh more verbose readable code. And okay, and now the reason I've actually waited until the end of this series to cover these shortcuts is because I'm a little bit old school and I believe you should learn how to write readable verbose code before you learn all the tricks and shortcuts to write faster code which is harder to read. So, and you know, some people might disagree with that but that's just the way I am. Let's go ahead and create a new file, and we're going to create our main function, but I'm going to create this main function a little bit different. This might throw you off a little bit. And this will work because monkey will actually allows you to omit the return type, and you can also omit the actual return statement with all of your functions. Now if you just omit the return type, it's going to default to the integer type. And if you omit the return statements, it's going to return the default value for whatever type it returns. So let's say if this were a string, and we left off the we left off the return statement, you could still assign this to a string. But what it would return is just an empty string, which is just double quotes. And then again, for integers, it's zero. For floats, it's zero or zero point zero. And for arrays, it's just the array literal, you know, the array, empty array literal, I should say. And for booleans, it's false by default. So that's that. I'm gonna get rid of this, take that out. And now you can also omit the type specifier from your variable declarations. So let's say you want to create a variable called i, and just create a variable called i. That'll automatically create an i of type integer. And if you want to do it with strings and floats, you could, there's actually special characters you can use with them. So if you wanted to create a string without specifying a type, you use the dollar sign. That says that's just that's opposed to typing colon string. You just do the dollar sign. And with floats, it's just the pound symbol. And you can do the same thing with functions. So let's say we wanted to make a function that returns a string. So you can get string dollar sign like that and that you can return whatever string you want. We'll return some string. Some string. And you can do the same thing with floats. We'll say we want to get some float. Use the pound symbol and we're going to return some float. And now there's another way you can omit the the type for variables when you're declaring them and that is to combine the colon and we'll create some new integer, we'll just call it hello. And you use the colon and the equal sign together, and then you assign it some value. And what's going to happen is it's going to, monkey's going to make this variable of this a type based on what you're assigning it to or what you're initializing it with. So in this case, it sees an integer here, so it creates hello of type integer. And the same thing with floats, you create some float, use your colon equal sign, and then some float. And this also works for any objects. So if we were to create a class up here, call it student, we can create a new student here, and using the colon equal sign, assign it to a new student, and it will automatically declare this student as the student type based on what's returned from new student. And this comes extra handy in let's say when you're using doing the each in for each in loops on lists or uh, arrays. It comes extra handy. Let's say I'll create a list real fast. I'll call it list. And it's a type int and we'll say new list int list of integers. So you go for you can create your local item variable or whatever, and then you just do the pound equals each in, and then the listy, and that will auto automatically set up 
item as an int because each item in the list is an int for every time you go through this loop. So that kind of shortens your four statements down just a little bit. And you don't have to like go back and say, okay, well, what type of list was this? Or what type of array? You can just use the pound equals and you don't have to worry about it. Now that I've shown you these neat little tricks, I'm gonna show you how to break them all. And the way you do that is you use strict at the top of your file. So now when I try to run this, I'm gonna get an error right off the bat. It's gonna say illegal type expression for the function main. Well, that's because every time I do a function, I have to have its return type with strict mode on. And you know the reason people use strict mode, or the reason you might want to use it, is if you're going to give your code to someone else, or you're planning on open sourcing your code, because what it does, it forces you to make it readable and understandable to just about everyone. So a lot of you'll see it on quite a bit with open source monkey projects. And so now I'm basically I'm going to go through here and I'm going to fix everything. So now I got to make this an int. Got to change this. Oh, this got to be a string. This has to be a float. This has to be an int. This has to be a float. This has to be a student. This is fun, right? And I'm just going to get rid of this. This is getting old. And now you also have to have return statements for everything. So, or for every function, I should say. And so now if you want to actually create a function in strict mode that doesn't return anything, you'll use the void type. So I'll say some me some function, and it's gonna be a type void, and that means basically it doesn't need to return and it's not going to return anything. So you can just call this function, you know, assign it to anything or anyth anything like that. So this function just does something, just prints something. And I see everything. Sh oh, these functions aren't fixed yet, so I change this to string, change this to float. And now you'll see that this will now work. And it all ran just fine. I have complied. Oh, strict master. And there you go. That is a look at some of the shortcuts, some of the shorthand, and how to use strict to force you to write proper code. And thanks for watching. Hope you learned something. Leave me questions in the comments below or send me an email at jim at smalltimeoutlaws.com and I'll see you in the next video.